We've begun to transition our functional component to a class component and adding state by adding this state object here where we're putting all of our values that we want to save in state. The next thing we need to look at is how we're going to replace our original set go out setter function that we were getting from react.useState. And this is where extending react.component comes into play. If you were to dive deep into the React codebase and look for this component class, one thing you would see is a method that is called setState. Since we are extending react.component, our own custom app component will also have access to a method called setState. However, since we are inside of a class, I will need to reference it using the this keyword. So I can say this.setState, and it specifically needs to be spelled this way and essentially everything else will remain the same. Just like our original react.useState state setter function, which we were calling set go out, we can either pass into this.setState the new state that we want to use in place of the old one, or we can pass in a callback function like we're doing here that will receive the previous state, which we can then use to determine the new state in case we need to know what the old state was to determine the new state. And for anyone wondering, I think this probably is a bit of a silly way to be saving our state with the string yes or no. We probably should be saving this as a Boolean, either true or false, and then converting it to the string yes or no down here when we're actually displaying the data. But for now, it really doesn't matter that much. We'll just leave it the way that it is now. Now, there is going to be one little problem with this. Let me refresh. I'll go ahead and click my yes here, which is how we can actually change this. That's where our on click which calls this.toggle go out is. And I'll click this and I get this error in the console. Now the Scrimba console doesn't really give me a lot of information about what this error is, but if I open my actual developer tools, I can see an error that says cannot read properties of undefined, trying to read set state. And honestly, this bug in React with classes is one of the most confusing things to learn, especially when you are a new developer in React. The simplest way that we can fix this is to take our regular toggle go out class method here and change it to be an arrow function. Now this might seem like complete magic for anyone that doesn't understand one of the fundamental differences between an arrow function and a function declaration, but like I said, we're going to cover that in the next lesson. For now, this will make our error go away, so we won't have to worry about getting an issue, but we're not quite finished yet. If I try to make a change here, it's obviously not changing. When I click this button, it's supposed to change from yes to no, no to yes. And that has to do with a change that we made earlier when before we were saving go out as a string yes, but we moved it to be inside of an object. However, currently we are receiving our previous state, which remember is now an object, not just the string yes or no. And we are trying to return either the string yes or no. So what we need to do is update our return statement here so that it is returning an object with a go out property, since that is the property that we're trying to update. So instead of returning either yes or no, I'm going to cut this because I'll probably end up using it again. But I want to return an object that has a go out property whose value is then determined by this ternary. Although we can't just say prev state because that is never going to be equal to yes because now it's equal to an object. So I need to say prev state dot go out and check if that is equal to yes. And if it is, then change it to no. And if it isn't, change it to yes. So now let's hit save and clicking the button is changing this value the way that I would expect. Let's clean up our commented code up here. And I think what I'll do is write up some comments that will summarize everything that we've learned so far, in case anyone is better at learning through reading some of these and interacting with those comments. And then I want to make sure that I get your hands on the keyboard so you can practice this kind of transition from a stateful function component to a stateful class component. Let me type out just a few notes. Okay, let's do a quick summary of what we've learned so far. Anytime you have a class component that will contain state, it will always save state in a class instance variable that must be specifically named state. And the state will always be an object like we have here. Then the individual values that you want to save in state will always be properties on this state object. 
As we've learned so far, the simplest and the more modern way to declare new state in a class component is just to use something called a class field, which declares state as an object, just like you see right here. Then throughout the rest of the component, anytime you need to access that state, for example, like we see down in the render method right here, you can access that state by using this dot state and then dot whatever your property name is. Coming down to our class method, any class method that you create inside of your component that needs to use the this.setState method in order to change state, which by the way, this method might seem like it's coming out of nowhere, but the truth is it is available to us because we are extending react.component. Anytime you need to declare a function that uses this.setState, for now at least the easiest way to do so is to use an arrow function. And it's important to note that this arrow function is what helps us use this.setState without receiving any errors, but you don't necessarily need to make every single method in your class an arrow method. If it doesn't use this.setState in the body of that method, you don't necessarily need to make it an arrow method. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. We're going to do a quick practice with this, and then we're going to be talking about another way that you might oftentimes see state declared in even older React code. So that's what we have to look forward to next.